Here's another video that you might find useful, but before I get started, remember this is not structural engineering advice. I cannot provide you with that. These are just suggestions for things that might work. Um, and of course, a few ideas in here will give you uh, some help in trying to figure out whether or not you want to even store anything in, a, in an attic. So let's go ahead and get started. We have an 8 and 12 pitch here. Plenty of room in the attic, and I know a lot of people just want to throw stuff up in there and store whatever you can, and some people want to make it into a second uh, bedroom or um, living, living room, living area, something like that. And you need to keep in mind that most of the time, the ceiling joists are not going to be designed for floor joist. This doesn't mean you can't put a floor up there. I've seen people do it plenty of times and I've seen them do it without having any problems. But uh, most engineers aren't going to like it. Your building officials, they're not going to want to see it. So near the access hole is usually where you're going to be storing stuff. And we will have drywall or plaster. And of course, the first thing I want to point out when storing stuff in your attic is not to store it on top of the drywall. Again, I have seen people just put their boxes right on top of the drywall in an uninsulated ceiling and uh, never have any problems with it. I've seen people put boxes, just span them over their um, floor joists, not have a problem with it. Um, and I got that. You, you're, you know, pay attention here. You can do stuff and not have problems with it. Um, but uh, of course, I have seen people store stuff and then have problems with it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making the video. So most of the time you're going to have, uh, when you pop up through your access hole, you're going to be able to see insulation. You won't be able to see where the walls break. You won't be able to see something like this. You'll have to pull the insulation up to see something like that. But you can actually just put some boards in here. Um, plywood, um, one by tens, whatever you want, and uh, kind of uh, lump them together. Or you can space them apart, you know, whatever the, whatever you want. A few inches here, I just pulled the boards out, but uh, six inches, something like that. If that's, you know, if you're using some one by tens or something like that, and you need a little more room, your boxes or your stuff you're storing will span the distance and the weight's still going to be transferred down to the ceiling joist. Like I said, you don't want to store anything on anything that uh, is flimsy. Now, something else I wanted to point out here is that you're going to be able to store more um, or heavier items, you know, items with more weight in areas like this where you have shorter spans. So over a closet where you have you know, a two by six spanning two feet, you can put more weight here. Um, you're not going to be able to do that if you have a two by four spanning 14 feet and, um, you know, you need to put all your weight in the center. So the shorter spans, you can put more weight in. And again, this is just kind of common sense. If you have two foot, you're going to be able to put a little more weight on a two foot span with a two by six than you can with a four foot span with a two by four. So hopefully that makes sense. And uh, you know, if you have a two by four spanning 14 feet, I wouldn't put much, I wouldn't put much weight in the center. I would try to have my weight kind of, you know, not going any further than a foot or two off of each side of this area here. And if you just have an open room here, try to, keep the weight as close as you can to this area. And again, two by fours just might not cut it. You might need to add uh, two by six or two by eights because um, the two by four are probably already sagging if they're overspanned for those uh, areas. So hope that makes sense. Lightweight storage. Again, I can't provide you with um, any type of uh, weight, um, how much you can put on, what's a maximum. You know, I don't know what your situation is. Now, overloading it, you know, fi putting filing boxes filled with paper, um, you know, books, that is not recommended. Christmas ornaments, lightweight stuff, you know, maybe some clothing, um, fine. But once you start overloading it and packing this stuff in, is you know what, I got plenty of room on the other side. I'm going to fill the entire attic up. 
you could end up with some big problems. I've actually seen the ridges of the building, the roof ridge, sag because of the weight on the ceiling joists um, and the braces that are used, the, the purlins and stuff to hold everything together. They actually just pull the rafters down. I mean, I've seen people that go on, hey, you know what, I'm gonna attach a, a brace like this one here. I'm going to connect, uh, you know, put a board from the roof rafter to the ceiling joist to give it extra support. I can put more weight up there. Well, then you just end up pulling the ceiling joist starts to sag down and of course it pulls the roof rafter with it. Another problem you could run into will be thicker insulation. For example, if you have two by six ceiling joist and R30 insulation, then you might need to add some type of a spacer board. So if you have thicker insulation, you might need a two by six, a two by four might work, and it will simply attach to the top of the joist, and you could use building hardware, toenails. Um, and again, um, try not to beat on these joists too much. If you hammer, you know, if you're moving them, you could pop the plaster off of the drywall below. So screws or something, just be gentle when you're attaching this stuff together. Last thing you want to do is watch this video and uh, son of a gun, what happened? That was the one tip you needed the most. So keep everything in mind and try to figure out more stuff. I'm probably not going to be able to cover everything. It's just not, not going to happen be a 12 hour video. So uh, spacers here we can see now we have a nice flat surface that we can put our plywood onto and then you don't have to worry about the insulation getting squashed and of course not doing uh, working as effectively. Another thing I'd like to point out if you are building something new or doing remodeling work then plan accordingly. Use larger ceiling joist for if you know you're gonna um, store in a specific area or use it for storage. And again, you could use two by six um, through the rest of the house and then go to two by tens or two by twelves and then go back to two by six if these are gonna be the areas that you are going to use for storage. So hopefully that makes sense. The uh, information in here, again, it's uh, some of it's common sense. You don't want to be stepping on stuff in the attic. Do not step on the drywall, the plaster. I've seen a couple of movies uh, with that. Uh, didn't work out well. And, uh, and actually uh, witnessed it a few times. I personally haven't uh, had the experience of doing it, but uh, was working on a job where uh, I uh, got to witness the person's feet sticking through the ceiling in the bathroom. So... Be safe when doing something like this. Um, walking, you know, if you're a carpenter, or, you know, someone in the business, you're comfortable working, you know, walking on ceiling joists and stuff like that. That's one thing. If you're not, get a nice surface and start working your way, um, you know, to where you have an area to step on. So, and if you are going to store something in an area and you need a walkway, you know, this might work. You need a, um, we call them catwalks in the construction industry, um, but uh, you need a little area. You're going to store stuff over here. Then create an area uh, where you can actually climb up into the access hole and walk or crawl over where you're not stepping on the joists um, or trying to maneuver through here. Create something comfortable to um, actually get from point A to point B.